I would say it's necessity. At, yeah. at one point, in, at some point in time, they will come to realize that it's not whether they will or will not get hit, it's when they will get hit. So having that, that security stance ahead of time is important. The types of attacks is still similar. We see phishing, we see ransomware, we see crypto jacking. Okay, so phishing, I think I do not need to explain. Everybody knows phishing, ransomware is also similar. Um, we've seen a new class of ransomware, we call it ransomware 3.0. It's what we call ransomware as a service. Basically, um, there, are, there are criminal groups that will rent out their ransomware so that a, a maturist person can take their ransomware and attack some other. But usually, if you're looking at um, uh, attacks, if you want to order to spend the time, to do that, then it's probably more okay? So if you're talking about small and medium enterprises, unless it is a, a keen competitor who is just more out of competition or take out his competitor, usually those scenarios may not happen. Right? And the third type is called what we call crypto jacking. So crypto jacking basically it compromises your devices and use the bandwidth on your device to do crypto mining, they're hijacking your bandwidth, and the, so that can affect anyone. Okay, so, in the context of small and medium enterprises, these are the these are still the top three that we see. Okay, um, yeah. So that broadly the landscape is what we see. Um, most SMBs will get what we call drive-by attacks, and it can come in the form of spreading. Um, ransomware or phishing in a very broadcast manner. So what you have seen, say, in WannaCry previously, is one of such, right? Um, typical tactics like dropping a, a malware-loaded USB drive. Uh, maybe an if maybe also a, a typical way of attacking. Right? So these are some of the common things that we will see in SMB. As a small business owner, um, a few key things that you need to take. One is on all the devices, you need to have a, a protection software. Okay, so the PCs, the, the laptops, uh, and a lot of people forget the mobile phones. Uh, it, the mobile phones. It includes the mobile phones that you bring to your office environment. Okay? So, um, a lot of SMBs will say uh, your mobile phones you can bring into a company, you can connect a company Wi-Fi, and you can access. That means you're inviting. So that needs to be protected. So the, the devices. Then the next is the parameter. The problem today is we work from home, from remote working. Right? Um, the parameter is getting more difficult to, to defend. It used to be you put a simple firewall, you can defend or intruder detection software. But now you need to, uh, on top of that, you need to have VPNs, right? So they encrypt the channel coming in. So, so if you imagine your your device is protected, you encrypt the channel going in, and then your your central resources get protected as well. That's why you're fully protected. Of course, as they grow up in their journey, there will be more investment they need to put at the central resources to be able to protect, to be monitor in real time. And that, but that is when they move along their journey. The second thing that I will say they need to invest in is awareness. Okay. Employees need to be aware, don't click on any funny links. Even if it's their own device, the problem is when they get compromised, for the very virtue that the fact that they bring their device into the company's environment, the company may get it as well. So these are some of the uh, few key, I would say, two key steps right, that I will say um, the company needs to do. If you look at if you look at the the what it takes to invest in the software, is is it's not as heavy as the investment on your hardware. Right? So it's manageable. 
um, of course, um, using the software will mean that you need some form of a uh, expertise to be able to handle that. Right? If there's an alert, there's a warning, you know really how to respond to it. So we have also seen a lot of SMB when they cannot handle it, come to a point in time, they say, okay, I need to get someone, uh, some expertise in. So we have seen it uh, appearing in two forms. One is they will work with a system integrator or IT uh, provider that they, they, are, they are close to. And we notice a lot of SMBs will behave this way. They have usually have one or two uh, IT providers that are very close to, you know, within call, they will come, they will help them solve the problem. And there's some economy of scale, right? From all these IT provider, they probably service like 10, 20 customers. So they, they can brush up on the skills and be able to do it. Uh, we have extended network, right? Of, a distribute, of dis distributors and then uh, uh, providers, uh, system integrators, or resellers and providers who can then reach the customer. And then the whole value chain comes back. The second form is uh, outsourcing it, right? Not so the outsourcing can come in different forms. Um, we have seen people who outsource just the security part of things. Meaning they pay a certain fixed sum, someone will watch it for them. So that's one form of outsourcing. The other form of outsourcing is taking the, the whole thing out altogether. They will say, my IT is say outsourced to the provider, I pay him a fixed sum every month. Or a fixed sum every month plus uh, X dollar times number of devices. So this is an outsourcing model. So we have seen both forms actually. I would say it's necessity. At, yeah. at one point in at some point in time, they will come to realize that it's not whether they will or will not get hit, it's when they will get hit. So having that, that security stance ahead of time is important. Yeah. And a lot of SMBs they will collapse IT and cybersecurity together into the same service provider or the same IT person. So it makes sense uh, to, to get someone to, to handle everything for them. It still, it still remains the same. It's a catch-up game, all right? Um, stay aware. We are always on a journey to educate, to raise the awareness. It's not just by ourselves. We work in conjunction with the national agencies as well. Uh, we also will be working with some education institutions to raise the awareness or actually give them and help them in the development of the curriculum. So at the government level, the policy, the regulation uh, needs to happen.